Hello, I'm Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm wearing a blazer because I need to find out which portable typewriter in my collection is the very best of the best. So I have devised a Battle Royale March Madness-esque bracket to pit all of my portable typewriters against each other to figure out which one's going to win. Now I have defined portable typewriters as anything that comes in a case because I have a kind of diverse collection. I've got electric typewriters, I've got normal portable typewriters, and I also have toy typewriters, one of them which comes in its own case. And I decided that, well, it's only fair to put it in the running against all of the other machines because it too fits that definition. Now in order to determine which portable is the best in this bracket, I've decided to put it through a couple of tests. First of all, I want to determine how much that typewriter weighs because you want a portable typewriter to be actually portable and something you can move around. So I weighed all of the typewriters. I also want to test how the typing experience is on each typewriter. I also think that power should be factored into that decision because electric typewriters technically need an outlet to work. And while that can be portable, does that make it less versatile? I also want to check the kind of papers that I can get into the paper trays on these portable typewriters because you want a portable typewriter to be as versatile as possible, which means I'm going to be testing cardstock, normal paper, and also postcards within these typewriters. So how did I match these typewriters up in the bracket? Well, I just kind of made it up as I went along. I did try to pit typewriters against each other that might look the same or function in the same way. So you'll see that I have two of my Royal Portables that look identical to each other, pitted against each other. I also have two electrics against each other. And in other cases, I went based on other things like putting two of my most colorful typewriters against each other because that seems like a really fair thing to compare on these portable typewriters. In the event of a tiebreaker, I do have a six pound Yorkapika Zoo named Diamond here to help me make the determination today of which is the best portable typewriter. So in order to go on the first category, which is the weight of that portable typewriter, I have here a tiny little scale that will weigh each of these typewriters with some degree of accuracy. Once you get over about 12 pounds, it just kind of registers it as 12 and you just kind of make a guess for it. But I weighed all of my typewriters. And the results are in. Coming up first is Billy, the Buddy L Easy Writer typewriter, and he was about five pounds, which makes sense. He's a toy typewriter, he's mostly plastic, there's not a lot going on inside of there, and he's also a children's toy, so he needs to be something that can be carried around by a child. Next up we have Caroline, my Corsair Deluxe Smith Corona. I weighed all of the typewriters in their cases because I thought that was the best way to accurately reflect how heavy they would be, and Caroline was about 9.5 pounds, a little under 10. And the rest of the typewriters in the collection were over 12 pounds. Now for scale, that's about two of my dog on top of each other. So the portable typewriters all kind of fail the weight test except for the first two and that's because, well, they are just smaller. They're not ultra portable typewriters, I don't have any of those, so I can't expect anything to be under that, you know, eight pound kind of mark but I was surprised that all of these typewriters were above 12 pounds in weight in their cases. It doesn't seem as portable to me. Um, if you're taking that to work or on the train, that is a lot of extra weight to carry around with you, but that's how much these typewriters weigh. So I guess weight can't factor too much in the decision between typewriters, and it'll have to be left up to the typing experience. So I did my first round of testing, and now I know who's moving on to round two. In the first matchup, we have the two electric typewriters versus each other. This is David Henry, the Electra Smith Corona 120, against Jan, the Sears Celebrity Power 12. Against these two, they're pretty similar in typing experience. However, David Henry does seem to double type on the X's, which makes him less consistent than a typewriter like Jan. Our next matchup is really no contest. That would be Caroline, the Smith Corona Corsair Deluxe, versus Billy, the Buddy L Easy Writer Toy Typewriter. Now, Billy does hold his own. He does actually type things, which is great. However, he types in all caps and you have to use the shift button to get to the figures, which is not really um, helpful when you're trying to type out there in the wild or taking a typewriter across the country on your road trip. So in this case, Caroline will have to move forward. Our next matchup, I can't make a decision on because they were both really bad for typing. Um, that would be my Royal Quiet Deluxe over here. See, I can't even tell them apart when they're in front of me. And then that would be against my Royal Aristocrat Georgiana. So both of these typewriters are still in repair phases. I'm still working on 
properly readjusting the draw band on the Aristocrat, and I've just done a deep clean on the Royal Quiet Deluxe, but I think the paper feeder and the feeder rolls inside are a little gunky because paper just did not seem to want to roll through it properly. I did manage to actually type out the phrases on both of them. I think both of them probably need a new ribbon, but between the two of them, it was pretty much the same typing experience. Georgiana had a little bit more ink on the ribbon, uh, but it was you can actually see holes in the paper where they both typed through them. So that's not really helpful. I did have to bring in my tiebreaker diamond to test which typewriter she thought would be more effective. <laughs> You're showing them your butt. Do you want this one? Do you want that one? This one? Or do you want this one? Go pick one. Neither's not really an option now, is it? I can tell you're really enthused by this experience. <laughs> Unfortunately, Diamond is a little camera shy and didn't want to eat on camera. I don't blame her. Uh, so the one that she did end up choosing off camera was the treat for the Royal Quiet Deluxe Diana. So this one will be moving on. The next matchup was a bit of a surprise for me because I'm not a huge fan of the Underwood Universal typewriter, but I actually found that I liked both typing experiences pretty well. If I could have had one of those, or both of those, move forward past my two little royals here, I definitely would have, but in the end I decided to go with Covey, the Royal Futura 800. I felt that the typing experience was way more smooth. Uh, it just seemed to go much more quickly, and I think that the font being a little bit bigger makes it easier to read for me, so that one will be moving forward. The next matchup is no surprise to me, but I have Nora the Electric Olympia versus Webster the Smith Corona Classic 12. Webster is one of my most consistent machines. I will always pick him over just about any other typewriter, except maybe we'll find something different in this matchup today, but against Nora, it's no contest. Nora actually has her shift basket stuck, so it was only typing in all caps, and as you can see, uh, it was kind of all over the place, so Webster is definitely moving on from round one. So here at the end of round one of our March Madness Battle Royale Portable Typewriter Showdown, we've got moving forward Jay and the Sears Celebrity Power 12, we've got Caroline the Smith Corona Corsair Deluxe, we also have Covey the Royal Futura 800, we have Diana, the Royal Quiet Deluxe, and we have Webster, the Smith Corona Classic 12. So now it's round two, and I might have had an entire box of spaghetti since we've started. And now we've got these five typewriters battling it out. Now if you look at our bracket, we do have three typewriters on one side and only two on the other, but I'm not good at math or sports, so my bracket's just gonna be a little unbalanced. But for this test, I wanna do a weight test. And this is where I will take cardstock. I have this brown cardstock that rolls through some of my typewriters, and I also have the heaviest paper that I have, which is this postcard stock, uh, to roll through the typewriters to see if they will type on these. So in the first matchup, we have Jan the Sears Celebrity Power 12, which is an electric typewriter against Caroline the Corsair Deluxe. Now you'll notice in this first matchup, the postcard doesn't actually go through Jan the Electric Typewriter, but it does go through the Corsair Deluxe Typewriter. Now, I don't know why this is, I don't have an explanation, but it does mean to me at least that Caroline is a little bit better to take out there on the road because she can handle thicker paper types than the electric typewriter can. She's also a lot less heavy than Jan the Sears Celebrity Power 12 and aesthetically just a little bit more pleasing. And it makes me happy to know that the winner of this will not be an electric typewriter. I am biased, yes, but sorry, you're here, this is what you get. Then we need to take the other part of this bracket, which is Diana the Royal Quiet Deluxe against Caroline. Now Diana does take both paper types, and in the first round I realized that I had it typing on white, which is why no text showed up, but it doesn't explain the feed roller problems in the typewriter. I did adjust the color of ribbon for this type test so it would actually show up on the postcard, but at the end of the day, I think the typing experience really does weigh in here between these two. And for me, Caroline is the better typewriter. Not only is it lighter, accepts all papers a lot easier, but the overall typing experience, at least for me, is just so much better because Diana's feed rollers inside just do not move paper through very well. You'll notice I had to use a lot of pressure to get that postcard in there, but I also had to use a lot of pressure to get that cardstock in there, and that's a pretty normal weight paper for my other typewriters. 
On the other side of the bracket, we have Webster, the Smith Corona Classic 12, and we have Covey, the Royal Futura 800. So this matchup is pretty even if you ask me from typing experience. Both really accept the paper very well. Both of them typed very well on both types of paper, and overall they're just pretty stable machines. However, the typing experience on Webster, the Smith Corona Classic 12, was just so much smoother. There's a little bit of a hiccup in the Royal Futura as far as typing goes that doesn't seem to happen on the Smith Corona Classic 12. It's just a smoother experience overall. So for me, that means that Webster's advancing and, well, Covey, you can still stay. You're just not gonna win this bracket. <laughs> you smelling them? Which one is your favorite? If you had to pick one, which one would you go with? So both of these typewriters are great additions to my collection. I have enjoyed having both of them and they're two of my favorite typewriters, which is why it makes sense that they end up here in the final round. If I was going to pick one of them to win the overall bracket, based on all the tests that we have run, including the weight test, the test of paper types, the overall typing experience, and just my general knowledge of having these typewriters in my collection and how they've handled for me, I'm going to have to crown my favorite typewriter of this bracket for the portable section as... I don't, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I think if I had to approach this like a desert island problem, which typewriter would I want with me on a desert island for the rest of time to use? I think I'm gonna have to go with Webster, the classic 12 Smith Corona typewriter for a couple of reasons. First of all, yes, it's heavier, but it also means it's a little bit heftier in typing. The thing about Caroline when you're typing on her, she does have a tendency to shift. Um, even sometimes when you're on a typewriter mat, she's just too light to really be able to give you a hefty type job. And what I found from using the Classic 12 is that it's actually a lot more akin to a manual typewriter experience, like a big desk typewriter. So that's one of the main reasons I think he'd be a great typewriter on the desert island is because he's so consistent. It's a really hefty experience. I know that he'll get the job done, whereas sometimes Caroline has not been the easiest to deal with. I also find that the line spacing in general on Webster is a lot easier to control than it is on Caroline. And I also think that if I were to test even heavier paper, I could also get heavier paper through Webster, but I might have been pushing it a little bit with the postcard in Caroline. So there you have it, at the end of my portable typewriter showdown, out of 10 typewriters, the one that remains victorious is Webster, my classic 12 Smith Corona typewriter. If you guys are interested in more typewriter content, I encourage you to check out the videos on this YouTube channel. If you want to see more of Diamond, she's on here too. We also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter, which you guys can follow to see more things about my collection more tips and tricks and cool things you can do with typewriters. I want to thank you so much for watching this video today, and I want to remind you that you're just my type writer.